Merry Meet. I'm Colleen Criswell. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss a bit about the Great Rite and what it actually is and the purpose behind it, as well as the common misconceptions about this ritual and a lot of the confusion of this ritual and another ritual that is similar to it. In the most simplistic terms, the Great Rite is a ritual performed at Beltane, which in the Northern Hemisphere falls on May 1st and in the Southern Hemisphere falls on October 31st. The reason it is performed on this date is because Beltane is the mark of the beginning of the planting season. The celebration of Beltane tends to have a lot of themes that revolve around fertility. Now keep in mind, fertility in the olden days of paganism meant something different than what we look at as fertility in modern terms. In the days of ancient civilization, things such as supermarkets and fast food delivery services were not invented yet, so they had to grow food and hunt for food themselves. The celebration of Beltane was all about making sure that the coming year the food will grow, animals will populate in great numbers, so that the people would be able to eat and survive for another year. By this time, the last of the old harvest that was stored is about gone, so all that was left were the more hardy vegetables and usually meat that had been cured, so full of salt, and usually not the best cuts of meat are left, and of course wine and beer. So we're looking at the bottom of the barrel at this point. So it meant the people, mainly the farmers, chose to create a ritual that focuses on the fertility of the earth. And these people understood that when a man and a woman had sex, a child would be the result. So this repopulates. Due to this understanding, they chose this sort of symbolism to perform a ritual during Beltane. Now, keep in mind that through se though sex is seen as the symbolism, this ritual has nothing to do with sex or sexuality. It has to do with the result of a man and woman having sex and creating life. For those who are in same-sex relationships, this does not diminish your sexuality, nor is it giving the idea that only a male-female relationship is a possibility. Here we are looking at science and the understanding that in order to create life, we do need sperm and an egg. This has nothing to do with love or sexuality. It has to do with basic biology. So even though those in same-sex relationships can still work with this ritual, it is just understanding that we are not talking about human sexuality. We are talking about the understanding of how life is created and in ancient civilization, before we had the scientific breakthroughs and so on, the understanding of the act of a man and woman having sex was what was understood as a basic fact. I know there are a lot of different forms of sexuality these days, and there are those who get upset by the Great Rites symbolism because of this. However, that is not what the ritual is about. And when you're focusing only on that aspect of the ritual, you're missing out on a lot of the important aspects involved in the ritual. So remember, this is not a ritual about sex. It is not about sexuality. It is about the earth, plants, and animals. That is all. So first, let's get into the understanding of sympathetic magic. What this is, basically, is doing something on a small scale to represent something on a much larger scale. Sympathetic magic can be used for a number of things. In most common uses, we use it for healing. In poppet magic, for instance, we use the understanding of sympathetic magic. We create a poppet to represent the person we are healing or that we're performing magic on. Yes, you can use a poppet for other forms of magic, but in this lecture I will be using healing as an example. So, in the example of healing, a person creates a poppet in the image of the person who needs healing. So, let's say Jane Doe is having issues with stomach pain. J 
John Doe then creates a poppet for Jane Doe, and in the center of the poppet, he has taken a string and knotted it up around the center of the poppet to represent the pain. Next, he would charge the poppet to give it life, to connect it to Jane, so that he could help her out through the working. Then the spell, he would take the string and start to unknot and remove it slowly from Jane to help ease up on the pain she is feeling. So here we have a small scale representation of Jane and her pain. And John is helping remove that pain from her in a small scale. This is sympathetic magic doing something on a small scale to represent something on a much larger scale. So the great rite we are doing something on a small scale such as using symbolism to represent sex to mean something on a much larger scale meaning fertility of the plants and animals so that they will repopulate and that people can eat and have food. This is not about human fertility or fertility of the mind but about the earth being fertile and granting life to again so that humans living there can survive. The way the Great Rite is traditionally performed is symbolically, not physically. So no, a man and women don't traditionally sneak off and do the do, as my daughter puts it, but is done symbolically using items that represent the God and Goddess. Who can perform the Great Rite? Well, in a coven, usually the leaders of the coven will perform it. However, as most people are solitary, any person can perform this ritual. Traditionally, we use the athame to represent the god, though a wand could be used instead, and a chalice filled with wine for the goddess. So the athame or wand, of course, we look at it as a phallic shape, so therefore the male aspect, the chalice we look to as a womb, and the wine traditionally would be red to represent the waters of the womb. Now, in today's understanding, we know that the waters of the womb are clear, not red, but the red represents the blood of the woman, which was the understanding of the people at the time, because that was what was shed when a woman was not pregnant. So to them, the woman's womb would be red. The athame would be plunged into the chalice, splayed first, to represent penetration. Now, where that is the traditional way to perform the great rite, it is not the only way. These days, there are tons of ways we can choose to perform this ritual. And for those who are uncomfortable with the symbolism of the athame and the chalice, those who are sensitive to the idea of the male and female joining sexually, these ways are sometimes helpful to use. Flowers being placed in a basket or vase can be used instead. Fresh cut flowers are easy to get these days, though not something that was available that much during that time. So by placing flowers in a basket or vase, you are bringing life and growth to you. Also, during Beltane in the Northern Hemisphere, this date falls on May 1st, which corresponds with May Day. The tradition for the May basket, which was a small woven basket with flowers in it, which would be left on a door of random people to bring a little love and happiness into the world. Later on, this custom was rebooted in the 1960s, 1970s by using construction paper to weave the baskets. So one could use this as a new form of performing the great rite using colors that represent the god and goddess or the idea of the earth and sun to weave together, then add flowers to the basket to represent the life that is renewed from that union. This is a great activity to do with small kids to help explain the great rite for a family-orientated Beltane ritual. Another way is to actually put seeds into the ground yourself. Plant yourself a little garden or a potted plant to represent the great rite in a more literal way. Again, 
the whole point of the great right is because we are starting the planting season so by planting the seeds yourself you are doing a literal version of the great rights purpose and focusing that energy on a larger scale as to the world wide understanding that all the farms around you will grow crops and life will completely return or for immediate results plant a small plant in a planter and by the way the great right is where the euphemism of a man planting his seed comes from the more you know so with this ritual it would not be used for mental fertility or creative fertility because the symbolism would not make sense and it would not work properly so no the great right is not used for getting knowledge and understanding and creative inspiration you do other things for that by understanding the correspondences for creativity for instance the color yellow is traditionally seen as a color associated with creativity where you could plant a yellow flower and under the flower have a petition to help you with uh, creativity to grow yes that would be possible for a ritual and even though you are using the idea of planting something to help and aid that process this is not the great right or an example of that a key thing here is that the great right is specifically for growth of the plants and animals on the earth so this would not be for that another thing this ritual is not used for human fertility this is a big misconception a lot of people seem to think the great right is something that is used for hands fastings or marriage ceremonies and it is not and if you took the entrance exam and put that in your going back over essay that it is used in this sort of ceremony I will always state the following unless you're planning on having a reality show on TLC this is not something appropriate for hand fasting or marriage remember the great right is something done on the small scale to represent something on the large scale as in worldwide so not really appropriate so why do many books and even information on hand fasting include this misinformation this is actually very simple they are confusing the great rite with another ceremony called Herioskemos. the reason why this is often confused with this is understandable because a lot of times they use similar symbolism Herioskemos comes from the Greek and is a sexual ritual that is traditionally included in a hand fasting ceremony the bride and groom take on the representation of the deities usually the couple's patron deities or they could be a god and goddess that represent love and marriage this ritual is often seen in numerous other cultures such as Hinduism the ancient Near East Buddhism and others usually this is only performed with a man and a woman and is used in a hand fasting to represent the union of the couple and he's usually done with the athame held by the groom being placed in the chalice of wine being held by the bride and him inserting the blade into the chalice this ritual can also be done physically after the hand fasting ceremony in private with the bride and groom consummating the marriage this is why there is the idea that the great rite is performed physically because the Herios Gamos is sometimes performed as a physical rite instead of symbolic. Other things the Herios Gamos can be used for is the precursor for what is known as sex magic. Herios Gamos can be part of sex magic rituals, and there are numerous other forms of sex magic that help in raising energy, either as a solo practitioner or with a partner and this is something that is totally different and again gets confused with the great right so why did things get confused well this happens when the creator of Wicca Gerald Gardner didn't fully research things let's be honest he confused the two terms 
And due to this, there is a lot of misinformation and countless books and Wiccan writers who have continued on with Gardner's misinformed understanding of the Great Rite. Gardner adopted the idea of the Herios Gamos and mislabeled it as the Great Rite and chose to include it as part of the third degree initiation ritual. This ritual was meant to be a symbolic ritual. However, some groups who are offshoots of Wicca chose to do the physical representation of the ritual, which brings a whole other issue. Let's first understand Gardner's thinking in this. As we understand the Herios Gamos, the two participants take on the representation of the deities. Now, when we understand the purpose of the third degree initiation, this means that the initiate has achieved the practice and study that will grant them the title of a high priest or high priestess. When they have this title, during coven rituals, they then invoke the god or goddess and represent them during the coven rituals. Priests and priestesses usually represent the elementals during rituals. During an initiation ceremony, the person performing it is always the opposite sex than the initiate. So one represents the god and the other the goddess. And the ritual is performed to solidify that. Seems simple enough. And again, when Gardner chose this as a part of the initiation ceremony, it makes sense. And his view was that it was to be symbolic, not physical. As I stated, there are some groups who choose to do a physical version of this. And let me tell you, be leery of any group who expects you to do this physically. Now, if you are a solitary practitioner or working with a partner who you are in a committed relationship with, sure, go for it. However, if it is for a coven and they expect you to have sex with your high priest or high priestess or in front of the coven, red flags should be raised as this is not appropriate and more likely you're not joining a legit group. So hopefully this clears up a lot of the confusion about the Great Rite and helps you understand the difference between the Great Rite and Herios Gamos, how they are used, why they are used, and when they shouldn't be used. Thank you for joining me. Mary Part.